Hey guys, this is Muncherelli, and uh, this is my tutorial on how to set up a Team Fortress 2 dedicated server on Linux. Now, I'm using Linux to connect to my remote Linux server, um, but you can use Windows and PuTTY and do just the same thing with that. Uh, first, I'm going to fire up my terminal window, and I'm going to connect to my remote server using SSH. Again, you can use Windows to do this uh, using PuTTY. I'm just using Linux on this tutorial. I'm going to use the su command to become root on my remote machine. And I'm just going to change directories to my root directory here. Uh, now the source dedicated server is a 32-bit program. So you'll need to make sure that you have 32-bit compatibility layers if you have a 64-bit operating system. If you look up at the top of my screen, I do have a 64-bit server. Uh, you can use uname-r to see if you have a 64-bit kernel. Um, if you have a 32-bit system, you can skip this next step. But uh, I'm going to install the 32-bit libraries by using apt-get install ia32-libs. And I actually already have this installed on my server, so uh, we should be good to go here. Now I'll add a new user. I'm going to call this guy TF2 and create a password for my new user. I'm just going to enter through these values here. Hit yes. And I'm going to use SU again to become my TF2 user and change to my home directory. So you should be in home slash your user. Now I'm going to wget the source dedicated server installer. Um, I'm going to use wget and just enter the URL right here in the command line. You can copy and paste this in here. I'm just choosing to type it in for the tutorial. That should download pretty quick. Now I'm going to make the file executable by chmod plus x. Now I'm going to run the hlds update tool dot bin. Type yes to accept the Steam server agreement. And now I'm going to run the Steam server uh, to finish installing it. Now you may need to do this multiple times. Um, it may error out. Uh, usually you want to run it at least twice. I might run it a third time here because it looks like it failed to connect. Let's try it again. There we go. And let's just do that one more time. All right. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and install Team Fortress 2 and I'm going to use the Steam executable to do that. Dash command update dash game tf dash dir period. Uh, you can specify a different folder to or a different directory to install the server into but I'm just going to go ahead and use the uh, period to install this into my home directory. Helpful if you want to install more than one server under the same user, but I usually use a different user for each server. Now you can see that it's downloading um, all the different files for Team Fortress 2. This usually takes a couple of hours, um, so I will be right back. All right, we are back a couple hours later and we've downloaded all of the installation files. I'm going to go ahead and run this again because it looks like there was a connection reset by peer error there. All right, we have the HLDS installation up to date, so we should be good to go here. Now I'm going to change directories into my orange box directory for TF2. 
and I'm going to run the SRCDS underscore run command dash game TF dash auto update which will automatically update my server every time that I run it um, dash max players 24 and let's fire this bad boy up on uh, some bad water basin one of my favorite maps and again it's going to uh, update the installation because we used auto update you don't have to do that but I find it helpful only takes a couple seconds to check the installation and uh, update it if there is an update and uh, oh it looks like we could have a little bit of a problem here take a look at the uh, network line there the uh, IP address it shows 127.0.1.1 which is an internal IP address and that means nobody will be able to connect to it uh, so I'm going to back out uh, control C and I'm going to add the IP address to my run command so I'll just use the same command as before plus IP and the IP address that I want this to run on if you have more than one IP address um, on your Linux server you can use any IP address that you want to just make sure that you type it into that line now one thing to think about is that since I'm running this in an SSH terminal my server will only be running as long as my SSH terminal is open so uh, let's use the screen program to run our game server in a screen Oh, it looks like we uh, are actually using the SU account, so um, we'll need to back out of our SU account and run screen while logging in as our actual TF2 user. So let's log back in in a new session window here. Enter my password. Again, if you were using PuTTY, uh, you would be doing this through PuTTY and not through Linux. All right, now I'm going to type screen to launch the screen program. And press return. And now I am running inside of a screen. So I'm going to fire up the Team Fortress 2 server inside of the screen session. I can type right here. All right, so while this is loading up in our screen session, let's go ahead and test it out. Um, we're going to use control A and then D to detach from our screen. Right now we are detached and it is still running in the background. So to prove that it's still running, let's go ahead and back out of everything. I'm just going to exit out of all these terminal windows that I have open here. And back out completely. Clear my screen, log back in to my SSH terminal, session, enter my password, and I'm going to use screen dash capital R to reconnect. And we are reconnected to our server, so it was still running. And um, let's test it out one more time. Control A, D to detach from our screen and just kind of prove it will back completely out open a whole new terminal window SSH back into our server use screen dash capital R and we are back up 
So this was just a quick tutorial on how to get this up and running. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave me a comment or a message. Um, and until next time, thanks for watching and good luck.